or an animal doesn't know that it's being categorized by how reproductively isolated it is. And so when our categories don't really affect their consciousness. In the case of human beings, we become aware of how the category, you know, what categories they are ascribing to us, and sometimes we may try to game the system. You become aware of the category, you try to take advantage that you're being categorized that way, and now you, you're gaming the system, which makes social science harder to, it makes it harder to, to produce objective knowledge than in physics, chemistry, or biology. One day they're going to have to come up with ways of changing that. This is, for instance, the reason why whenever you test something with human beings, whether it's a medicine that is purely physical, or whether it is some kind of a test about a, how, you, how you, your political beliefs, um, you always have a control group to which you give placebos, right? In other words, if you're going to test whether this medicine cures headache, you have to be aware of the fact that because they know you're testing medicine for headache, you might influence yourself into thinking that the medicine cured your headache, right? And you know the word placebo? Placebo is, a, is something that doesn't do anything, right? So you then have a control group, you give them things that don't do anything to, ch to try to... That is their way of trying to compensate for the distortion in measurement, for the distortion that awareness of being categorized or being tested brings into the measurement process. That's one way of trying to compensate for the distortion. For many other things, and it's a good example, the one you brought in, polling, the very phrasing of the question can elicit certain answers that are not exactly what you were looking for. And so one day there's going to have to be an entire science, which is the science of polling questions, right? an entire discipline, designed to show you how different ways of phrasing a question can distort the statistics that you're gathering. But I think this distortion is taken already into account. I mean, it serves them perfectly. They, they go for the presupposition that they, you know, wanted to prove. Oh, yeah, but, but, but again, you know, if you're a they Democrat... They wanted to prove. True, but, but then again, they leave themselves open to attacks by the other party. You know, right? If you are a, Demo a Democrat pollster, and you go and poll how many people are going to vote Democratic, how many women are going to vote Democratic next year or whatever, and you come up with 70% of women are going to vote Democratic. And then a Republican conducts a poll and he, and he turns out that it's 30%, right? Then your little trick of introducing the question just to get the right result backfires. Because then it turns out that you were... In other words, so many people are polling at the same time, some of them from different interest groups, that it is, there is an incentive to try to be objective. They don't do it. Because as you said, Democratic and Republican pollsters in particular in the United States always phrase things the way they want to be phrased. You know, did Bush and Cheney lead us to the Iraq war with lies? That would be one question the Democrat would ask. The Republican would ask an entirely different question. Was it justified to go to the war in Iraq, right? The is it, is it, the, yeah. Sorry, the difference between a, a poll on the, on the issue like or a proper study or survey of a, of a specific kind of trend or tendency is that that category that